a little bit more. I know we talked to you the other night, but as it sunk in, as you see, the, the stands going up that you guys are actually hosting. Yeah, no, over the last few days, it's definitely become a lot more real since um, Sunday, seeing all these stands coming up and everything uh, our our people here at UCF are doing to get this place ready. So it's, it's super exciting. Talk about, obviously, this regional. It's a stacked regional. You've, you're familiar with Michigan. You're familiar with Villanova. You've played them. Just talk about this regional and the opponent together. Yeah, uh, it's a tough regional. I know a lot of people are, are talking about how this is one of the tougher ones. Um, not, not many people are, are sure who, who they think is going to come out, but I'm feeling confident going into it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a game of softball. Anybody can win on any given day, but we're really preparing, really working hard, really doing our scouting, and um, I feel ready to go. You guys played Villanova last year. Uh, what do you know? What's the early scouting report uh, on Villanova? Well, especially with COVID and stuff, a lot of times the scouting report changes from year to year. So we're kind of starting from scratch and, and building up from the film we've seen this year and uh, just trying to build our offensive approach and, you know, what we're going to do defensively and that's, that sort of thing. What's the mood right now in the locker room for the team? It's just exciting and proud. I mean, this has been our goal from day one and, you know, we're here, we're here living it. So, you know, the, the 12-year-old us would be really proud of what we're doing here. So we're all just excited and ready to play. How do you maintain that competitive edge, knowing that, yes, you achieved one of your goals with hosting the regionals, but you, the work is not yet finished? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of our goals. We have we have more. We want to go to the Supers, and we want to go to the World Series. I mean, we want it all. Um, you know, I, there's no ceiling on this team. There never has been, and there's no ceiling on this program. And like I said, this game is softball. Anybody can win on any given day. So, you know, we're not counting ourselves out of anything. How would you say today's practice has gone, and what is your confidence level now, now that you have this practice under your belt? Yeah, I mean, with with every day, I get more and more confidence. You know, confidence comes with preparation, and you know, we spent today really focusing on our preparation for Villanova and you know their pitchers. And it, with when you do that, uh, you just get more confident. You know, I, I feel good going in today, playing on our dirt, um, getting some more reps, and really understanding the environment and seeing all these stands and stuff like that. I think it's a real advantage to be at home, and you know, we're starting to see more and more what's that, what that like, and we're going to take advantage of it. What do you think it's going to be like, the atmosphere of playing? It's going to be the biggest crowd ever. You see the stands going up. It's going to be 90% UCF fans. It's already sold out. Yeah. What's that going to be like? Today? I can't wait. I mean, Night Nation is the best fans in the world. There's no doubt about that. So I can't wait to hear everyone chanting black and gold and seeing all, all, all the fans up there cheering for us. I mean, I am I just can't wait. Talking about last year, you were in the Tallahassee Regional. Very similar. Stacked regional. All four game teams were good. How does that experience help you this time around? Uh, I think it's going to be a, like a tremendous help. Uh, last year, going into my first regional, you know, you go in a little wide-eyed, and now that I have that experience under my belt with like the media and the atmosphere and all those extra distractions that are going on, uh, now I know what to expect. And you know, the leaders of this group have really taken the time to try and explain those things to the newcomers and people that haven't been a part of a regional before, so we can kind of get ahead of those things. And I think we're way more prepared this year um, with some vets that have a lot more experience under their belt in a regional setting. I think it's it's going to put us in a, an advantage for sure. You, said, back and, you oh. said before the year, that was the goal, too. Once they took away the American Conference tournament hosting, that you want that they're not going to take away the regional. What was it about this group that you felt that strongly that time that you could accomplish that? Uh, this group is, you know, we're just full of fire, and this is – it's a family, you know, and we stick together through thick and thin. And to me, that's more important than any stat, than any, you know, physical attribute you can bring to a team. When you can get a group together that has this culture and this kind of love and passion for each other in the game, I, I don't think, like I said, you can put a ceiling on us. And, you know, I felt that from the fall. And that's why I said to Coach Bear, I mean, they can take conference tournament away from us. That's fine. But they can't take this away from us. And they didn't. Going back to when you made your decision to come here to UCF, just talk me through that. Did Coach Bear kind of sell you on this vision of being a program that hosts regionals? Yeah, um, so I, I committed pretty early. The rules were different back then. So I actually committed originally under Coach Gillespie. Um, and I, you know, Orlando's just a place I've always wanted to be. UCF is always a place I wanted to be. So my dreams are coming true. Uh, but the second I met Coach Bear, I mean, I knew that there was no doubt this is where I wanted to be. I, there was nothing that was going to stop me from being here. Uh, she's just so competitive, and I knew that this program was just going to soar under her and, you know, make history like we're doing, and that's, I just wanted to be a part of it. How does it feel for you to be a part of that history? You're only a sophomore, granted COVID kind of messes up with messes with the eligibility a little bit, but cons you're, credit you're listed as a sophomore. What does it mean to you to be, to be just a sophomore and end up being a part of history like this? Uh, like I said, you know, 12-year-old me would be proud. My dreams are coming true right in front of my eyes, and, you know, it's, it's really... Like I get the chills just talking about it. It's it's such a cool thing to be a part of, and you know I'm really just trying to cherish the moment and live in the moment, and 
you know, just I feel so lucky to be in the position I am and in the environment that I am and play under the coaches that I play under and play for the teammates that I play for. And, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's the best place in the world. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. And I, I'm just ecstatic about my career so far. And I'm excited to see where else I can climb to. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys.